in the Lord, I welcome you in the name of God this evening. I'm grateful to you that, and I'm grateful to God that we have the opportunity to converse this evening. My name is Rose Teteki Abbey, and I'm speaking to you from the Nantoma Memorial Congregation of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana here in Kanda. For the past few weeks, we have preoccupied ourselves with David, a man after God's own heart. And for me, that is the thing that fascinates me. Because when you look at David, you ask yourself, he wasn't a saint, he had his problems. What is it about him that makes God call him a man after his own heart? As, as I said from the beginning, I'm sure that 
every Christian has that aim to be called a person after God's own heart. And so these few weeks, the past few, and those ahead of us, we are going to look at, and we have been looking at his character to see what gems we might pick, what jewels we might pick that would help us also to become people after God's own heart. Last week, the first week we looked at his call. Last week we looked at how he faced Goliath and how we can face the Goliaths in our, in our lives. And we picked a few things from there that no matter where you go, there will be people who will try to pull you back. Like his brothers were telling him to shut up when he got to the battlefield. But then the second message that we got was that when you are confident the world will believe in you or definitely God will direct some people who will believe in you and who will make sure that you get to Saul with your story. We also realized that the people, the soldiers had majored in Goliath. They knew everything about Goliath, but they had forgotten about their God. It is possible to become so focused on our problems that we forget how great our God is. So we said we would rather major in God, know everything about God, and very little about our challenges. Just enough to help us to deal with it, but not that every minute we'll be preoccupied with it. We realized also that David made use of what he had. When Saul tried to dress him in borrowed clothes, he said, no, I can't go with this. I am used to the catapult and the stone and my God, and God really used what he had. So whatever it is that we already have, let us make use of that. Let's not be dreaming about what we don't have. It is what we have that we'll use. And the last thing that we talked about last week that I want to remind us of is that when we hear the word of God, let us imbibe it, let us believe it, let us live it. Saul said, God go with you. But you could see that he said it just like that. He didn't actually believe it. If he had believed it, the war could have gone differently. If he had believed in God going with you the way David believed in it, he would have had a different attitude to the war that was raging. And so we should not just be people who will just be saying hallelujah, praise the Lord as a punctuation mark. When we say praise God, we mean it. When we say God is great, we should mean it. When we say by the grace of God, we should mean what we are saying. My dear friends in Christ, these are some of the things that we looked at the other week. Today, we are continuing and looking at Joseph's um, David's life as a shepherd boy and asking ourselves, what did he pick? What, what was there? Was it even of any use to him that he was a shepherd? So our theme for today is the shepherd boy, preparing you today for tomorrow. Shepherd boy, preparing you today for tomorrow. My dear friends, we are going to look at his life as a shepherd and to ask ourselves, were there any lessons? Not much is known about David's life before he became, you know, a king. We hear from, about him from when he was um, anointed. And so it's not easy to look at what his life was like as a shepherd. Yet as we look at some of the things that he did as a, as a king, as well as some of the psalms that he wrote, it will be easier for us to piece together what things he picked from his life as a shepherd. And to facilitate, facilitate this, I'm going to read from 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 32 to 37. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 32 to 37. David said to Saul, Let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul said, You are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. 
When he turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Dear friends, as I said, it is not easy to piece together what went on in David's life prior to his anointing. Who he was, what he did apart from watching the sheep. Yet, his later life gives us a lot to reflect on and to enable us to surmise about his earlier life. His later life gives us an, an opening into his life as a shepherd. And so we are going to look at the scripture we've looked uh, I've just read, as well as various other parts of scripture that affect his life. And if there is time, we will reflect on his most famous psalm of all, Psalm 23. But if there isn't time, we will do that at another time. When, if you remember anything about his call, which is what we treated in 1 Samuel chapter 16, two weeks ago, you would realize that he wasn't somebody who was much revered. When Jesse was told to bring his seven sons, his sons, he didn't say, oh, I'm just bringing seven because the last one is somewhere. No, he didn't think that David was important enough to be included in that meeting. So he just called the, the first seven and left him. Someone had to ask the question, are these all your sons? Before he would say, oh, there is the last one. And as I mentioned, the last, the, the, someone said, we are not going to sit down until you bring the last person, that man. We need to see him. Now, Hebrew scholars tell us that the word that is used to describe what Saul, or what is now translated as the youngest, is the word hakaten. And that the hakaten, the word hakaten, implies more than just a young person. It's, it's sort of rank. So this is the last one, the unimportant, the not so useful, the well head in the skies kind of person, the littlest, the one that doesn't matter. So when they are calling them, the hakaten is not included. Now, normally in those days, a family would hire a, a shepherd to look after their sheep. We would never, probably would never know why the, this family, the family of Jesse, did not hire a, a shepherd. Is it that the sheep were too few? Is it that the family was too poor? Or is it that they just thought, oh, what do we do with this last one? You know, some of us even hear that. You hear families saying that, oh, this one was not planned. We've had all our children and this one just came. And we forget that we are not the people who plan. It is God who plans. So I wonder whether they, oh, this one that we didn't plan, this retirement baby that we don't know what to do with it, just leave him to look after the sheep. We don't know. We will never know why he was the shepherd. But what we know is that his leading of the sheep enabled him to lead the sheep of God. For me, that is the most important this evening. Whatever the reason that made him look after the sheep, whatever it was that made him not be part of the family as they were calling him, is not the most important reason. The most important reason is that where he was, God used that thing to prepare him for what God had in mind for him. And before I go on, I want to ask you, where are you right now? Are you where you think you are supposed to be? Or do you think you are where you are by mistake? Do you think you are where you are because some people made some conniving things and they pushed you there and that you are not in your rightful place? Where are you in terms of your occupation? Where are you in terms of your profession? Where are you in the church? 
Did you think that it is time, it should have been time for you to be elder in the church, but some people don't like you, maybe because of your tribe, so they didn't do, they didn't place you there. Where are you in terms of marriage? Are you married to the person you thought you want or you wanted to get married to? Where are you? I want you to know this evening that God has a reason for allowing you to be where you are, because that is where he will he has placed you or he, are, uh, he has allowed you to be placed so that you'll be prepared for the work that he has for you. Well, a few, um, we are going to look this evening at a few things that I think David learned as a result of his being a shepherd. And the first one I want to mention, they are not in any particular um, order, but the first I'm mentioning is courage. When David stepped on the field, on the battlefield, everybody else was afraid. They were afraid of Goliath, but he wasn't. He had courage. Why wasn't he afraid? Where did he get this courage? Definitely not on the battleground. Because even the soldiers, the, his brothers who were part of the army, I don't think they would have come home with any, um, what do you call it, any experience if David had not stepped in. If David hadn't stepped in, they, they, Goliath would probably have taunted them to a point where they would just be tired and then they would be defeated and they would come home with their tails within their legs, between their legs like beaten, defeated dogs. It wasn't an army where you learned courage. They didn't even have any fighting tools. But they were facing an army that had all the chariots and all the uh, spears and all the things to defeat them. And beyond that, they had the giant who would come and stand and say, look, even my army is not going to fight you. We are not going to waste your time. Just choose somebody to come. They definitely, there definitely was no courage to be lent. So where did David learn his courage? David got that courage from his work, where he was forced to be. Alone with the sheep, there was nobody to call on when danger approached. So as he said, he was forced to kill a lion and a bear. He was forced to to fight for himself, and in fighting for himself, he ended up learning courage. Shepherding became his point of reference. And so when David, uh, Saul, King Saul called him, in, in verse, the, the reading that I have already, we have already taken, but I'm looking at verse 32 of 1 Samuel chapter 17. When King Saul called him, and said, you are not able, what is it that you are saying? He said, let no one lose account, lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. He had courage. He came to that place, not just to deliver bread to the brothers. He came not just carrying bread. He came carrying a lot of courage. And then Saul says, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man. In some translations it says, you are a mere boy. But he has been a warrior from his youth. But then David goes on and says in verse 34, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, I struck it, and I rescued it from its mouth. And when it turned on me, I seized it by the hair and struck it and killed it. So David learned courage being on the field. And then he says in verse 37, the Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. This kind of narrative Talking about how brave he is, what he can do, not because he is strong, but because he has learned to rely on God, set the tone for his kingship. So he ruled not with his own mind, not with his own power, not with his own anything, but with God. And I am going to prove to you how many times scripture tells us that David turned to God before he became king and even as a king. Being out there 
as a shepherd, God for, uh, God forsaken place, nobody there to help him, facing dangers alone, taught him how to rely on God. I remember a young girl going to school secondary school for the first time and writing to her parents and saying, you know, you have been bringing me up and you have been teaching me, but now I am in secondary school. That was a 15-year-old girl. There is no one, and so God has become not just my God, but my father and my mother. So David was forced to not just make God his God, but to make God his brother, his father, his sister, his everything, in everything he, he, he contacted God. It was God that he, he took um, whatever, took counsel from. Again, I'm asking you the question, where are you? Where has God placed you? Have you been apprenticed to somebody who is not interested in teaching you what you want to learn and is more interested in using you as labor? Have you been posted to some faraway place where you can hardly do anything, where are you? I know somebody who was gainfully employed and said, oh, I want a little more education and has gained the education but has lost his job and he doesn't know where to go. But I know that God knows where that person is. In case you are listening to me, I want you to know that God hasn't forgotten you. God knows you are out there. God knows what he's preparing you for. God knows that there are certain lessons that you can only learn when you are in the situation where you are. Maybe God is using that situation to prepare you. No, let me take away that maybe. In fact, God is using where you are now to prepare you for where he wants you to be. It is said of people, sometimes you read biographies and they say that he rose through the ranks. And if you have worked with somebody who has risen through the ranks, you know that this person knows a lot about that work. It is not just go to school and study. I'm not saying just go to school as if going to school is not important. But I'm saying that these are hands-on people. So if you have the education and you have the hands-on, then you are tops. I've heard that a lot of people, a lot of, you know, millionaires and, and entrepreneurs who, have, who are in charge of big businesses, when they want their children to take over from them, they first of all send their children to school, but then you don't come back and straight be manager. They would sometimes even start you off as a messenger. And if, if it's a big company that has um, branches, in many places, they will send you to a place where nobody in the at that branch knows that you are the son of the owner so that you are treated like any other messenger. And then from there, you rise slowly. You, maybe you leave that place, then they send you to another place to do something else. So by the time you become the managing director, you know the ins and the outs of that job. You are not sent there because your father or your mother or whoever the business belongs to doesn't like you. The person wants you to get the training. The person wants you to understand. The person wants you to know the ins and outs so that when you become a big boss, you know that if I give this document to this messenger to take to that office, there is such a long corridor where nobody sees him or her that if you don't take care and these are sensitive documents, something might happen to the document on the way. So you don't do it. If it is a bank, you start from just carrying one file to the other and then you become a teller and then you go to another level and by the time you become the MD, you know what every station is supposed to do. You know the weaknesses and the strengths. You know who to put in those places. I am saying that the Lord has placed you where you are so that he will be able to use you for what he wants you to use. You are more careful as a, a boss when you have been down there, when you have learned everything. That is where, what David did. David was out there in the field alone, taking care of sheep, and he learned a lot over there. One of the things that he learned is to take care of what may seem as not so important. 
He says, when a lion came after one lamb, he left the rest, like Jesus would say years later, he left the rest of the lamb and went to look after, uh, for this one. He learned the value of animals and thereby learned the value of human beings. He had to learn to perform with the one talent before he will be he will, he will be convinced the, the, the owner will be convinced to give him more. When you look at Luke chapter 19, verse 17, Jesus gave a parable, one of the parables of the talents that he gave. And he, when the one who had been given one mina came with ten, he said, Well done, my good servant, because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter. Take charge of ten cities. If we are not able to perform in the little places where we are, we may never get the opportunity to be in the big places. God is ready to lift us, but we need to learn the appropriate lessons that they are. Another thing, and for me maybe is the biggest thing that I would say that David learned is the reliance on God. Being out there with nobody to help but God, David learned to trust in God. It has been said that when, when there is, you have no one and nothing else but God, that is when you realize that God is the only one and only thing that matters. So when he went to Saul, this, this trust showed up. He said, the Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. When he met Goliath, it was the same trust in God that he was saying. He said, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the almighty God, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. And... Um, my good friend Max Lucado points out the fact that there was just one army of Israel. But David said the armies of the God of Israel, you know, the, the God of the armies of Israel, it means that he knows that just as surely as there is a physical army there, there are also angels, armies unseen who are ready to come to your aid. Where are you now? And what challenge is scaring you? David is saying, trust in God. He lent his trust on the field. Not just the army of Israel, but also the heavenly armies. They are out there now to help us. And then when he met Goliath, he said, this day the Lord will deliver me into your hands, will deliver you into my hands, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And all those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. David was not just saying things. David's, David was talking based on a God that he had learned to love and to trust because he was out there as a shepherd all alone. Maybe he could not even rely on his father and his brothers. They forgot him. You don't know what else had happened. But he was there and he had known about God. David is all about raising the name of God because he knew that the things he was able to do, it had to be God, not any other person. It is not just there, but it's like every time David, God's name is on David's mouth, at a point when he started working for Saul and Saul started chasing him, started tormenting him and he had to run away, there was a point when he had to go and face the Philistines in the wilderness. If you read First Samuel chapter 23, you will see that. And we are told that he, he first of all inquired because he was told that the armies of the, or the Philistines were just taking off the food of the Israelites. So he asked God, should we go and fight the Philistines? God said, yes, go. But then the people that he was with said, ah, why would you want to go there? Look at us, we are so few and there are so many. You can't stand against them. So we are told that this, uh, David inquired of the Lord again. So First Samuel chapter 23, verse 2, he asked, should I go up? The Lord said yes. Verse 4 of the same chapter, it says, again, should I go up? Because now people have raised doubts. He didn't listen to those people. He went to his God again. God said, go. 
Later, when he ran to be with the Philistines and in 1 Samuel chapter 30, and they were going to war and he was going to join them, but they said, no, we won't go to war with you because you might turn against us. And so he had to return to Ziklag. He gets to Ziklag and his wife and children and that of his men, the wives and children of, the, of his men have been taken by the Amalekites. And they were ready, his men were ready to stone him. Because how can you tell us to follow, follow the Philistines? Now they have rejected us. We have come back. Our wives have been taken. What did David do? David inquired of the Lord. David consulted God constantly. Even as a king, he did it. After the death of Saul, David inquired of the Lord. 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 1. Then he was crowned as king, and again the Philistines were pursuing him. David inquired of the Lord, 2 Samuel 5, 19. David defeated them, but they mounted another attack, so David inquired of the Lord. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 23. When David was confused, he talked to God. When David was challenged, he talked to God. When David was afraid, David talked to God. David had developed such a growing trust in God. And, uh, you know, so much that he hardly did anything. Trust, contacting God, inquiring of God, asking God, praying, became like second breath to him. And I'm sure he learned this when he was out there. I can't stress that enough. Another thing that I think David learned as a shepherd was patience. Because if there is one, humili uh, one similarity between human beings and, and sheep, it is that of stubbornness. We are as stubborn as sheep are. And so for him to be able to get all of them to follow him, to be able to get the sheep to follow him, to take care of those who had gone astray, to take care of those who for no reason would stop moving, David had to be patient. And this patience stood him in good stead when he started working for people. He could patiently live in the palace. Remember, he had already been anointed. He knew that he was going to be king. Whatever that meant, he probably don't, didn't know how God was going to do that. But he had been brought to the palace to serve as a, somebody who was singing, to sing so that King Saul's soul will come down. He, he, when he became agitated, he would be at peace again. Saul was not even, you know, appreciating it because he was trying to kill him because people had sing, sung and praised uh, David more than they praised him. So he was afraid of him. But in all this, he patiently and humbly waited Sometimes God plans so many things for us, but lack of patience makes us lose them. We don't realize that sometimes even the plans that we think God has approved have to be put on hold indefinitely. We have to have the patience to wait. We don't realize that when God says wait, that is also an answer. We need the patience. And patience is not something that will be taught to you in the class. You learn patience through going through situations that demand patience when you don't have it. I used to have this uh, poster in German that says, in effect, God give me patience, but give it to me now. God doesn't teach patience to us now. We learn it by going through trying Moments, And that is how David learned it, being with the sheep. David had time because taking care of the sheep probably left him with not so much to do. Apart from when every now and then an animal came to attack, the sheep would pretty much take care of themselves. I'm sure if he'd done it for a long time, he knew where to find grass for them. He knew where to give them, take them to still waters. He knew the ropes, so he had time. And he used that time to play on his harp, to perfect that which he had. And I tell people, people would say, you know where I've been posted to? There is nothing to do. I said, but there are books. Read them. When groups are meeting, go and sit down. Listen to them. 
God puts us in places to learn so that when we get to where he really wants us to be, we would not be novices. We would have learned a lot. My dear friends, I don't know why you are where you are today, but I know that God knows why. God has some things that you have to learn. Things that you cannot learn until you agree to be where he has put you. And things that until you learn them, he cannot take you to the next place that you need to be. David learned courage and it gave him the assurance to be a great warrior. And he led his people. Even before King Saul died, he was leading the people to go and fight. And so people liked him even before he had the opportunity to be king. Wherever you are, God is teaching you certain things. Don't be tired of hearing it because I want you to know that wherever you are, you are not wasting, you have not been put there because God has forgotten about you. Rely on God. Learn that, that without God, you cannot do anything. David learned patience and humility. David learned to rely on God. Le David learned to use his time. He used his time to write so many psalms that I haven't counted, but I'm sure that of the 150 psalms, I'm sure David had written more than half of them. He wrote much more than that. My dear friends, wherever or whatever experiences God has taken us through, he gives us those experiences so that we will be able to use them to glorify his name. We will be able to use them to do the work that he has called us to do. We can either do that and move on to what he has called us to do, or we can sit there and say that everybody has forgotten me. Yes, people may forget you. People may be wicked. People may send you. I don't think that when People were, uh, uh, Joseph's brothers were sent, selling him. They said to themselves, oh, when we sell him, maybe he will go and become a prime minister. They were selling him so that he would go and suffer. But because he used that time and remembered his God, when it came time for him to do what God had sent him to do, he knew how to do it. One of the things that David had to do was to be, as I said, play the harp and I'm sure as we read in scripture, he was sent there because the harp was to calm Saul down. But nobody realized that God was using that time to teach him, to give him first-hand lessons as to how to be king, how to live in the palace, how to, I mean, what goes on in the, amongst the servants of the palace. And so when he became king, he, know, or he knew all all these things. As we study the, 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 as we study the character of David, one of the things I want us to go away with is that whatever is going on in your life today, God is using it to prepare you for tomorrow. David Baby, a radi amma hunkwain amma wakoshe. Me in kase, baby, odi wakoshe. Nensu, baby, a wamma hunkwain amma nipa dase nidi wakoshe no. Ensu, wwe no hun, ma wwe nisu na shwe radi. Ne busa na se, e diye inti na midye, udi mi be shwe ha. E bi e juma amu womu no, nipa a woye e juma ni nina ye, nipa ba akun ha oni subay no, onu ni edi wakoshe na se. E bi a, Eh, bebe, ya wumo bebre, obi ya pe so oko skuwa, sika wa hoa yedi chuya, wunkuwa di edu wo sono, yesi sika ni ho, ko shunya bibi wei, ko ye apprentice wa ha, e eh, hokura a uwa nukura anu nya di biya ni ye chira wo, ni ame kane se, se e eh, ye radi na wo sumo no di ya, e eh, ni ye bebi ya wo sheno, ko suna sheno, if you say, o oh, hini David, wansha se se o oh, hini, no yo gwan shefo, Nensu or one now or shall won't know, or shall not bra boa a toa sono, or to me who say, O one no cosher won't know, and ye brea a say ye, ne ye brea or dishia a raddy, or di huno niama be bray. 
Odi hu niyama bebri. E bini se, niyama ni biyo hu ye ni se, chese o nyaya kukudro, e fi se ni mkwano ni nyaya ni woho, inti sabwe bi ba, se bi bi ba e bechi wonga, on tu min kase mi kofre mi papa, na wababe ye, on wang kase hunu se, aka on nini nyanku pon. Na madam fubi no chro na adi no kan se, se enka wu ni nyanku pon kwa, wu wun se nyanku pon kwa ne hun hiya. Na se bi biye ji wun sem, o biye en en ka wun hun biyom, se ke biye ni ho, na ka wu ni nyanku pon ha. E ho na ube hun se, se eni ama aka ni ni ne hun hiya, nyamin kwa na ni hun hiya. Inti David diye, o shunya sa adi eno. Wanko yo jwan shwefuwa, anko on tu min shunya, o du u bebi a ye kuno. Na asrafu na wo kuni nina, no asoja fuwa ni nina, na wonga bo hun. No onu diye wa mo hun, efise ni mkwa atina bebi a ye bida. E bi asoja se ni diye wo ni mse ye nina, filisti fo ye abe, wamo beba hu, na ye nina su ya su ya ye hun, ni ye ni wonga kokun. Nen su goli ati si ya nadiya ye nyane sa, ye ye no one on one. Mi jina ho, na mini wu akun. Wamu nye bi saada, nensu Davidi diye, esa ni so yo juan shwefua, o nunkwane wa yure mu ho, e shwe nyaye nintinu. O nimse nye ye ni abu wajina, puna puna, o ni wamu eku, inti anye ni hu. Nia eradi ama wu hu kwa yin, ana bebi ya wa ama hu kwa yin, se o ni wu ebe shenu, eradi ankasa, ebe fa enusu, no di esie siu. E bia, no ni pa da se ni, ene di wako she ho, e ma e nu e mo u hon, ni e hiyan ni se ube, ma we ni su nu wa she e radi, se ni e ma ka, a fe di afono o no, mi se se ye chro la e no, e ma u, ni an chro ni yi e kra, u di me radi ya, onu di o ni mse ni o chro wo suwa, e tu mi, e ye tina, God rise straight, even on crooked lines. Inti e hono, Bebi ya ne juma o ye e sa o gwan shefo no. E ma, o hini David, e nya jindi e bi wo Yesu Christo mo, e wo nyanko pon e mo. Inti bebi ya ra o kono, bebi ya no ni o kani se, mi nyanko pon no. A, o bwa mi bebi ya, mi shwe, bra mi shwe nyan eno. O nwa ne be bwa mi, e wa hansu. Bri bi e mo, o shia, o hini sol, o kansa a chre eno, e chre eno. O du goliate ni mwa na goliate esire no. O si sire a wo sire mi yi. E mo mi hon. Efi se mi ni mi nyam ya me sumo no. O nu no be ya ma me. Se wun so e radi yu shwe ya. Wun ni mse ni eti. An sa na ube nye jidi ye no. Na je se o di ya. O wafa o hao bi mo. E na wun hon se ni ya e radi. E yi ni wun e di a chile. E nye se mo na ye preji mo. Ni e di nye ye jidi ye debi. We don't develop our faith through listening to sermons. We develop our faith when it come when we come face to face with impossible situations when we think that we cannot go again then when we go through it by the grace of God we say that his love in times past forbids me to think that he will leave me at last in trouble to sink eh <laughs> O na boni ye ho wa, e jie he kwe ye haan. Ke a ywe ye, o ke nga ke a ke ye ye ho wa ye neke. O ba a shio chichi, no ba a ywe a ke neke ye yo. Inti, se wa so nou a shwe ya, na wu kan, na wu nim ni a wu kan. Inti, bri bie mo no, o hini David e kasa, na e radi hwa sem, e na o kan. Inti, e nun ti insu no, ni, Na hini emu nyi nanu, na hini emu nyi nanu. Ni ana o ya nise, ni ya bibia e betu nono, nu wa bo hon pa ye. Bibia e betu nono, nu wa bo hon pa ye. Upe a, kokan ye, samu wa honma ye tosu miye nono. Eti miye nono, eti e nom, jese, inchi che mune bebre ye waho, ya si we ni mo ba ni ho, inchi obusa e radise minya ni den, ena we ni mo sore ti anu, obusa e radise minya ni den, wo ya she wo hini didaw, o di fu Samuel, a afo wo ngo, 
the dow. Inti ebrea su inti min sisa mi e eh, nipa edi mechino na min konko dia hinye no min kwa jino by force. E ne sa ni ye ye no. Nen su wanka sa obusa e radi se onye ne sa. Onye ne de. Inti o suro se edu brea o hu ni obeye nu e fre radi. So hu bi biya e jina nenim wa fre radi. O suro na wa fre radi. Chese se ye ne ena o wo fo na anka meka se ni fo nu na be wo so nko a e ye urade na bre bia nso o fre urade nu urade tie nu enwan na o hwe nu o sua bo aseto e fi se wonni bo aseto a won to mi hwe nwan so o hwe wo mu so nu o sua sa bo aseto nu inte bre o be ye o hini a o hwe nwan o hwe ni pa so nu na eh sa bo aseto nu nya fe na o be ko akosua nu urade nim se e hu be hia no e urade nim se ahobrasie e be hia no e urade nim se otwen hunhum e be hia no nti e urade fa kwan bebre so e na odi saa nia me nyina e ma no me nua ba me nua be ma wo tie mi nia me bu sa wo ne se e hifa na wo saa bre e die mu na wo hye wo di wo dwin se ai aho kire yi mu ade yi mu de me ho kire mi pa o e ba ni sai na me nko ama ba sha ha e ding de na me se nia wo wo ho nu bu se urade se ba bia woni mi abehye e den na wo pese mi sua e kwam ben su na wo pese mi fa na me fe hu yi if you say and I didn't name the entity, I want my own client to share her. Or nipa that's the need you name say. Or but we're trimming. Then so be pie if you hono. Na a radio CSC. I'm a juma or pese udino. Enti no. Or he ni David enya kukudro. Oh oh shiya senya yadi yangu tuwe radi su. Onya ahubrasi eni ochen hum hum. Onya brempo edi shiya senya ni guitar na. Eh, me name said you guitar and me can we try mo. We try crampon so near guitar. Then so near what bono? On your break, if you say who share your answer, and yet you ma be brave ya. What you ho? Now who share one thing? No, or this one? Now you know boy ya. If you do break or he ni soul. Eh, bibi ha na yesi yempo biya o pe o tumi bossa ha dinu pa David ni eko fa no ya dinu ba honka o David di e o me a hini enu hum be biya nensu o bet na honu o suye mu ni ame be bre inti e do bra e radi bre no do ya se so o di a hini enu na shi na chese yesi yesi enu dada enu mre i wa nsu ya shi ya ni ampe se wu shi ya ni se be biya wu shi no. Bibi biare wo ho ese se wo sua no sua if you say radi di siesi wo wo le no ni hewo ni david ya choto kwelo wo le no ni hewo ni a che na a che le ko shi ne he hia aka akele awo mi akele wo mi ni e e e kweto ya no ni na kan be ya fe benefite shi e cho bene ke kase ni bi e ke kase ake e ke na eh tema ke te heno kamo ye nyombo mne ele ake nye nche yehowa efe hami mme ne ho ke nche le e ba afe hami ne she e manche ye li beye ne ke ni bi ne ne kase ye no me ba ye bu ale e wo ke ji mme ne ni won kwe manche david e wala shi hin le mi ni won bi wo he ake mi ni ni bi wo ba kase ye mi e no ko me ni mi nto ni wo ko ke je mi nji ake he fe he ko he ko he ni gbomo adesa ke bo ba aje ko ko hie fon yehowa no le die nche ba mo mi no ba ka se ni bi ye jebe ni o ba na ka be ni ba wo bo ke jeje ni se he no ya chu ni ye e sa bo mumu no na le ya ka yi wa le be ye no e sa bo e jaje bo ke hon ni chumo kristo die nche a yi abu abu ko ni he fe he no yo fi mu ni yo mi ye e wo bo he wa le ni ke bo a cho mi ni sa bo ke han ni chumo ni yo ke han bo e Ya nyumbo chele ke bile ke mo kron kron le ba ame. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you so much for this evening. As we have looked at another aspect of King David's life, as we have tried to ask ourselves, why was he forgotten? Why was he left with the sheep? Why was there no shepherd? Why did he live that life all alone out there in the field, probably just coming home in the evening. As we have pondered these things, Lord, we have realized that you allow us to go into situations 
so that it will prepare us for what you have for us. We pray, Lord, that whatever we are going through today, we will not let the, situa- the, the lessons go wasted as we complain, but that we will look up to you and we will make use of the opportunity and learn everything there is to learn so that when finally you put us where you want us to be, we would be ready to go on. We commit people who are in situations right now where they are wondering, why am I here? It could even be nurses and doctors who have been placed on the front line at this COVID-19 time, even not having the opportunity to see their families and maybe not even giving, receiving any gratitude from anybody. It could be somebody who had, been, who had gone somewhere to do something good and had come into contact with somebody and is now infected. I don't know. But Lord, wherever we are, especially those who are suffering and are not able to learn the lessons, I pray that your spirit will be on them mightily, Lord. I pray that your spirit will be on us mightily, all of us, that we learn the necessary lessons so that, Lord, when you call us finally to do the things for which you called us, Lord, we will be ready. I know that some people have been through divorce so that they will better understand the concept. I know that some people have grown up in broken homes, probably not so much that they, that is not why they were in broken homes, but I know that maybe you allow them to go through it so that they will have more understanding for people coming from broken homes. Wherever it is that you have led us, Lord, we know that you, won't, you don't waste experiences. Help us to make good use of those experiences to glorify your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Now, my dear beloved, let us receive the benediction. May the God who knows you, who leads you wherever he wants you to go, may that God reign in your life today. May that God make use of you where you are so that today, tomorrow, and in the days and years ahead, you will be of good use to him. And may the blessing of God Almighty, creator, redeemer, sanctifier, be with you now and evermore. Amen.